T minus 90 seconds and counting. All systems are go. We're about 90 seconds from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 17 seconds and counting. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8, start, two, one, boost for ignition, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. All right, gang, so raise your hand if you ever had to tell your cat, don't eat the space shuttle. What, just me? Well, anyway, hey there, fellow wackadoos. Uh, greetings and welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Crew Basic Asylum, where, as always, I am your guide and chief nut job in these parts, the one, the only, Dr. Doodle. That's me. Howdy. Uh, welcome to episode uh, 15, but 14, episode 14. Uh, this one's QBA 14. We're talking about Blender. Yeah. Hey, if you watched my last episode, that one back there, number 13. Yeah, and I'm lucky 13. How about that? Well, if you watched that, we talked a little bit, or we touched a little bit on uh, using the palette command to change colors and such, but really didn't do it justice. So with this one here, we're gonna go. We're gonna show you all about the palette command, how it all works, and um, yeah, come take a look. I think you'll think this. It's fun. Cool. So here we go. All right, so here we have QBA 14, our Blender Palette Builder. And uh, by the way, copy left 2022 by Dr. Doodle. That's an actual word there, copy left. So anyway, what is a, a palette builder, you ask? Well, I will show you, hang on, boop. All right, now, here we've got the Blender Palette Builder, color value, save and quit and all this. Now here we've got these three, I don't know if you can see the colors too well in this camera, but we got our three bars here and of course black background. But what happens if I should click right here and then Raise this up and oh, hey, look at there. Woo, the background's turning red. Uh, bring this down here some more. And now uh, maybe we'll put some, some green in here. How about that? We'll click it. Oh, look at the green. There it goes. Back up and then back down. Now with the blue, of course, as you, no big surprise, it gets brighter and then darker. So we can, uh, well, here's something cool. People say that green is a mixture of yellow and blue. That is not the case because our eyes, we only have receptors for red, green, and blue. So where does yellow come from? Well, first we take some red. And now what if we toss in some green? Hey, there's kind of a muddy brown ick looking, maybe almost orange there, and you keep going. Boop, so yellow is actually a blend of red and green. How about that, who knew? Uh, well, actually, I knew that because I messed with this a bit. But look here, we take this down and we put in a mm, little blue. We got a, a happy little purple work in there. How about if we bring this up? Oh, there's white. Uh, we can come down here with blue and, or teal, I guess, kind of blue-green. Oh, there's a neat color. How about that one? All right. Now, so what is the point of this, this program here? What, why is it? So what big deal? We got all these different colors and stuff. Well, if you'll notice... As I move a, a slider, the color value number changes here. I don't know if you can see that. But in any case, what this palette builder allows us to do is to come up with a custom color. Uh, say, for instance, uh, well, like in the last program I mentioned, maybe you're doing a forest program and you want or pro forest game and you want all oh, many different shades of green but you've only got two choices with the 16-bit palette or with 56 256 colors and anyway we can any shade of green we want we can add a little red here likewise if we're doing undersea we can have all kinds of nice deep blue maybe we'll go with this uh sea blue or even sky blue what have you uh okay or there's the we're doing a volcanic one uh, underground with fire and ooh, lava there's our shades of red and everything else so what's the big deal we, we change these colors and what what's how does it help us out well let's say again we're doing something with with blue so bring this down and we want the bright blue here. We like this color. Oh, there's a good one. There's our color value, which we'll use for our, our palette command later. Uh, but we like this number here, so we'll just set save color to one. Now make it a little darker, because hey, there's another one. We'll save color two. And uh, how about even dark yet? We'll throw in a little green. Oh, that's an odd kind of a but blue gray almost so save color four or three excuse me. And now we'll throw in some red just for good measure. How about that? We'll save number four. And for good measure, we'll uh, we'll go with a um, little more bluish. There we go, a different shade. Uh, maybe a little, little kind of, there we go. 
almost a crimson color and we'll, we'll save number five there we go now we hit quick here boom now we've run our, our palette program, we've saved our colors, and let's just take a look here. Uh, I'll minimize that so I can go. By the way, I don't know if you've ever seen this command, but in the immediate, however, I'm bring this up here so you can see like that. In the immediate window here, you just type in shell, and watch this, boop, there we are. We're right to, to DOS now. QBasic is still running in the background, but we got our DOS screen up, so we'll clear screen here. All right, so here we are, we're in, QBasic is running in the background, but we got our DOS screen up, so we can do DIR, uh, all dot P-A-L, and see what we got here, boop. Now the default we're not messing with, but this Blender Pal file contains the, the values for the colors that we just created and we saved into this file. Now I'll just type this here type uh, it's hard to type speaking of which with this camera in front of me but type blender dot p a l and bang see these are all the, the numbers that if you remember we we move the file the sliders up and down and the, the numbers change these are now numbers that we can pump into the palette command and get those colors back i'll show you what i'm talking about in a moment uh, let's just hang on a second All right, now I have opened a QBA 14B, which is just a simple, not even a full screen of code. The idea here is we run this and boom. It just draws five boxes with the first three color, one, two, three, four, and five. But now if we hit this, it'll load the, palette, the custom colors we created and look, there we are, all these different shades of blue. These are colors that we generated with the, the blender palette builder and again the idea being to have 16 20 30 whatever how many colors you want different shades of blue or green or red whatever you want custom palette or custom colors if you will and i know this camera really doesn't do colors too well but these are all different shades of blue which we saved with the palette the blender program so file open blender again qba 14 boop and run this again one more thing I want to mention before we get into the nuts and bolts of how this thing works. If you notice down here, we've had a bunch of numbers. These are all zero at the moment because the background is black, meaning there's no red, there's no green, there's no blue. Now, if I move the red up and down, watch this number goes up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 63 different shades of red. Likewise with the green, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 63. And of course, with blue, Let's click here, bring this up to 63 and down. But now watch what happens to the color value. When I, okay, we've got red at one, color values run. Red's two, color values two. Red three, color values three, and so on and so forth. Let's do this with green, see what happens. We've got green is one, but look, our color value is 256. Make green two, and now it's 512, or two times 256. Uh, make it number three and now the color value is 768 why is this well the color value is th uh, i'm sorry 256 times whatever green happens to be and now we add blue let's go to one for blue there's one blue and it's 65,536 who that's quite a few we go with two units of blue there's what 131,072 yeah, 131,072. Basically, the idea is the palette command takes whatever shade of red that you want from 0 to 63 and just uses that as the number. But for green, it multiplies by 256. This way, we can have different blends, and it knows, I mean, if this is... 22 and 22, you add that would just be 44. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So they, they multiply the green by 256, multiply blue by 65536, and add those three numbers together. This is where you get your value. I know it's crazy, but that's the way the palette command works. So let's quit this here. Boop. And now we take a look starting from the beginning here. So we've got, of course, Blender Palette uh, Builder copyright copy left 2022 initialize program here we got def int a through z declare sub uh, mouse font this just makes all the variables uh, default integer by default and then declares the sub program sub procedure excuse me the mouse sub procedure now we set our variables red is zero green is zero blue is zero rgb which is the combination of red green and blue rgb 
is zero, then color is one. Now color, that's the first color we want to save. For example, when we start the program, color number will be one. We click the save button and it saves the first button. It automatically advances to number two. Now we save another color, that's color number two. It advances to three, we set another color, it advances to three, etc., and so on. All right, screen 12, that puts it in 640 by 480 pixels, uh, 16 colors, and in the palette three. Palette is, palette is the command that changes the color palette, of course. Now in this, in this particular instance, we're using three, which is, we're coloring the background number three, which is typically a kind of a, a, a aqua color, but we've made it zero to turn it black. We draw a line, number three, which a black, would normally be a blue, kind of a teal box, the full screen, but since we used palette to turn it blue, now that uh, that gives us a black background. And you'll see why we need that in a moment. So line, here's all the lines here, the black box fill, yep. And now we're putting all our, uh, it's got locate, print, change the color. Oh, but I don't know if I showed you the color command, but yes, I'm sure I did in the past. But the color just tells the, the, the QBasic what color to print the text. Like for example, uh, color nine, that's I think a kind of a green color, so it prints B in the, in the greenish color, or whatever it is. Now color 10, locate and print L, so B-L-E-N-D-E-R. These are the different colors for Blender, and then P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. You get the idea, it's just Printing Blender Color Palette Builder on screen. We got this line here. Uh, yeah, these are just lines around the where it says locate color, uh, color value, uh, save color, print screen, uh, or quit. All the different buttons and things. That's just color value, save color, and quit. Now here's the lines. Okay, these lines here, these are... You'll see these later. These are the, the bars that go up and down, the red, the green, and the blue. It just starts them off in the sort of zero initialized colors. Uh, lines here, I print the number for red. Lines, print green. That's down at the bottom where zero, 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 and little boxes around them. Now print using RGB. That puts the, the value up in here. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's speak this here. So the main program loop is pretty simple. We go do and loop while in key is nothing. So again, like before, until we hit an actual key, it just keeps looping, looping, looping. Mouse three checks the mouse, what buttons are pressed, and if button one is pressed, and V is greater than 10, less than 440, so if it's in the range of those bars, then we turn off the mouse. Check the mouse again, and select H, the horizontal position. Is it over the, the red, the green, or the blue bar? And it's from 10 to 50, then we go sub red mix, then it adjusts the red color. Likewise, 110 to 150 green mix, and 210 to 250 blue mix. Notice 10, 110, 210, so they're just 100 pixels over. Uh, case 314 to 496, we go to save palette, and if it's greater than 542, then we go sub quit. So these, this is the, the subroutine for the red mix bar, the green mix bar, the blue mix bar, the save button, which is up here, and then go sub quit, obviously quit the program. Now, uh, once that's done, we turn the mouse back on, and if, and just loops, if B equals three, then mouse two, so it turns off the mouse, clear screen, ends the program. So you can, you can quit either by hitting any key or just clicking both mouse buttons. So that's the basic program. It just calls us the subroutines as needed. By the way, if you're wondering what this was all about in the beginning, shh, it kind of reminded me of an article I read years ago all about uh, NASA and how they program. It's kind of cool. It, it just it interesting. They actually program in a different language, not QBasic, but the concepts are just the same. Uh, for example. With this program here, you notice I got do, mouse three, and then loop. That's three separate commands on one line. to separate them by the the, uh, semi, the colon there. So you got one, two, and three commands. Now, NASA does not program that way. They have very strict guidelines so that there's only one command per line. Like for example, do this would look like this. Do, followed by a comment with the date, the time, the version of the software, who put it in there, and why. And then mouse three, again, date, time, per, version, programmer, purpose. So the, the idea is every line of code is one specific command. 
and they, they document each line with a comment saying where when it was put in, the date and time, what version of software, who put it in, and why it was changed. This helps us track down things, because uh, I mean, as you can imagine, rocket science is pretty complex, and if the software is not working fine, all this information helps them to, to track down what's going on. Why is this now the engine not starting? Well, oh, it looks like Dave, big dummy, he changed this here on that date. So I just thought it was interesting to see that. It's all about style, and it's that maybe that's a little overkill, too much information, where I will typically just comment a different section, like this section does this, this section does that, because I have a, a style that I'm accustomed to and I, I can remember how I, I program, but if you if someone else comes in, they can look at this and know exactly what that line does and why. But I, I thought that was pretty interesting, so uh, that's what the, the space shuttle is all about. Now, uh, another thing, if you're interested in more fun minutia about the space shuttle just hang on to the end of the, the the video and i'll have some cool i think they're pretty cool facts and i will see you then so back to it so where are the subroutines well let's take a look at these here we got red mix and again this will look kind of strange and and complicated but remember it's a lot of repetition because red mix is essentially identical to green mix and blue mix with some variations, obviously, instead of like red, where are right, let me just cover this first. Here we are at the red mix subroutine. When we call this, we go do and then loop until the B equals zero. In other words, while you're you're holding the button down, is making these adjustments. You release the button and it ends the, the subroutine. So here we've got the V, if that's greater than V is uh, 454, then V equals 454, so it's not too low. Now here it comes the lines. So now this is drawing the red line here. We got the line uh, 11, 11. That's 11 pixels down, 11 pixels over. And 49V. So it's uh, 49 pixels over and then down to V, wherever V happens to be. In other words, wherever the mouse cursor is, it draws the, what, the dark red line from box, basically, from here down to the cursor. And then it goes from line 11V to 1149, so the same 11 to 49 width. And wherever V is, it draws from V down to 455. That's the lighter red color. So we start out with the, the, the dark red on top, and then the light red on the bottom. And it comes uh, wherever V happens to be, that's where it stops drawing this and starts drawing that. I hope that makes sense, but as you move it, you'll see what I'm, Let me just run this, and you'll see what I mean. Now, when we, we move the, the fader up and down, the, the mix, red mix subroutine will draw a box from here to there, because that's where V is at the moment, in the dark red, and from V down to 455 in the light red. As we move it back and forth, it just keeps doing that. It draws from 11 down to wherever V is, then from V down to 455, and keeps drawing it back and forth. To this actually draws the bar on screen. So we've seen now that the, these lines, that just draws the bar as you move the mouse up and down, it updates the, the different colors. Now, this is where it make, assigns the actual values for red. So red equals 455 minus V. In other words, 455. So if V is always all the way down here at 455, then there's no difference, it's zero. Maybe it moves up 10, so it's only 445. Well, that's a difference of 10, so our, our red is now 10. It moves up another 10, where it's 435, now it's a difference of 20, so red is 20, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it just takes V, wherever V happens to be at the time, subtracts that from 455, and then divides by seven. Why divide by seven? Well, if you notice, run this here. All right, so this, this is a whole lot more than, than 63, there's a whole lot more than 63 pixels we're going up and down. It's whatever 63 times 7 is, it's about 450 thereabouts different pixels. So if we didn't divide by, by 7, we'd have 450 right now, but the highest we can go is 63. So whatever value you've got for red, we divide it by 7 and we end up with our, our shade, if you want to call it that, whatever value from 0 to 63 for red. Quick. So yes, we take the red, we... So Find out where V is, subtract that from 455 to get our value, actually divide it by 7 to get the value. And then if red is less than 0, then right equals 0, because it obviously can't be 0. We go sub update, then loop until B equals 0. In other words, while you're holding the mouse down, until you release the mouse, it just loops, 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 so you can move it up and down. Once you release the mouse, uh, the button is 0, and it exits the subroutine, goes back to the main program. Now, likewise, 
green mix, same thing. If you look, it's it's basically the same idea. If V is less than 11, then V is 11. If it's greater than 454, then it's 454. This way, it has to be within range. Now here, our lines, if you notice, it was 1111. This is 111 and 149, 111. So it's 100 pixels over. And it draws the, the lines here. In this case, this is two, excuse me, two, which is the green, yep. Yeah, right, green, and then 10 is the lighter green. Uh, green equals 450, same just like with red. Instead of changing the red value, we're now changing the green value. We divide by seven, and if green is like zero, then with zero. Then we go to sub update, and with blue, same thing. It just it moves over 200 instead of 100, so 11, 110, 200, I'm sorry, 11, 111, 211 so this draws the dark blue and light blue lines and now the blue we're adjusting the blue value variable uh, we'll take the V to find the value divide by 7 to get our shade 0 to 63 if blue is less than 0 like before now we go with some update so what is this magic update well here it is update RGB equals red plus not just green or blue it's red plus green times 256 plus blue times six five five through six if you remember let's run this again yes as i move this up and down now you can see we got our value it's uh tw shade 23 shade 33 shade 45 whatever and that matches exactly because it's just whatever color that's the the number that it pumps into the palette however with green we take one or two like there's two with this 512 one is 256 so whatever shade we have here we multiply by 256 to get that number and likewise with the blue we get one one shade of blue and that's 665,536 two is twice that and whatever so what we're doing we're multiplying whatever shade we have for the blue we multiply by 65536 and gives us that number now we add whatever green we might have times 256 and we add whatever red we might have just one to one and that's the the and not value that we get that is the number that the palette wants to create this color I know it's it's crazy but that's how the the program works so we quit here I should say that's how the palette command works so here we are update now we got our RGB and the, the ampersand sign mean that's a long integer RGB equals red plus green times 256 plus blue times 65536. Whatever number, whatever shade that gives us, then we just pump that into palette. And I've used, uh, let me just I'll bring up the palette command. This will explain a little more, a little more better. Yes, so the palette attribute and color. Now the palette, that's the command that actually changes the particular attribute. You can think of it like a palette, like just a, a, a RK, uh, Microsoft, paint program had an actual image of a little palette for pro, for uh, icon and you had the red green blue paint you'd mix it together well that's the thing you've got only 16 different colors that you can have in screen mode 12 but using the palette command you can blend these two colors or those two or you can blend them all together you can only have 16 different colors on screen at a time but using palette you can customize any one of those colors that's how you can get 16 shades of blue or 16 shades of red what have you so with palette, our first our first argument is the attribute. Which color do you want to change? You want to color change color one, color two, color three, color four. That's the actual attribute to change. And then the color is the number that like we vit, you saw the color number appear that puts it in there. You can also have an array if you want to load them all and from a file. That's a little more complicated. But that's the basic idea. Palette takes an attribute and a color, and it whatever attribute you want to change, like the very first color, if you think of like oh, ink well or, or paint wells, you can put such and such color in this well, and such and such in this well, such and such in this well. Well, here we call the palette. We decide which well we want to put it in, the first one, second, third, fourth. And then we, the color number, that's the actual value formula that we, we figured, or mixture, we, we came up with. And it pumps it into that attribute. I hope that's clear. It's about as clear as I can tell it. So escape here. So we... <clears throat> We, we get our, our value from this formula here. We pump it into palette number three. That's just the background color that we use for, for this program. 
Now we locate and we print using RGB. That's the actual value with red, green, and blue components that prints up here on screen. I don't know if you've seen print using before, but using is just, it's a way to format what's printed. So in this case, we got using one, two, three, four, five, six different digits. In other words, it'll print up to six digits. Anything over that, it doesn't print. And likewise, uh, we got using for two digits for red, green, and blue down at the bottom here because it's only 0, 63. We only need two digits. So what that does is, it, yes, again, it, it changes, it gets the value of R, G, and B, whatever number we come up with, whatever shade, color we come up with. It pumps that value into palette number three, the third attribute, locates the values and everything else. So that's how it changes the background because the background is a box color three. Now, if you decide you want to change, save that color for later use, now we go to save palette. And this happens, we got do mouse three, it's checking where the mouse is, and loop until B equals zero. So in other words, while you're moving the mouse, it does nothing. You click on the button, release the button, then, it prints the RGB value that we just generated, prints it to file number one. And what's file number one? Well, we'll go up here. Where did I, uh, skipped over, here we go. We're opening a file called blender.pal for output as number one. So this is the, the file that we save our, our values into so we can open them later in another program and get our custom num colors back. So we go to save palette, <coughs> excuse me, and here is where we print this value, the RGB value, into file number one, blender.pal. We add one to color so the next time we click this button, instead of saving color one, it'll save color two, it'll save color three, etc, etc. And now locate uh, location 760 print using color in other words that's the the first color is going to be saved and then the second color and the third color so save palette just basically it takes whatever the rgb value is that formula stuffs it into our file file number one and then as we add more and more that the file gets longer and longer and then we of course quit that's pretty self-explanatory it uh turns off the mouse it sets this file length to the length of whatever file is open, then closes the file. If the length of file is less than one, if it's zero, that means we haven't saved anything, so we just kill Blender Pale, close, clear screen, and end program. Let me explain what that's all about. Let me bring up the media again and get the shell command. Remember, hit shell. And now dir all.pal, all our palette files. There's the default pal, which is used for another program, but that's it. We get default pal and nothing else. Exit. Now we run Palette Blender and we'll, oh, just come up with any, it doesn't matter, random colors. It says here, it says save color one. So, okay, we'll save color one. Now it's changed to two. It's waiting for, waiting for us to change, save palette number two, color number two, excuse me. So we'll come up with some kind of crazy color. Save number two. Uh, change this around here there slide up and down we maybe we like that color it wants us to save color three or it's ready for us to save color three and color four we'll save that and back and forth we'll come up with five because that's the what we got the other program for now we've we've saved our five colors and we can save a sixth seventh eighth if we want to but the moment we saved five we quit now we come back here we do shell again and we do a dir for all palettes P-A-L. Look at there. There's our default palette was there. Now we have Blender Pal. And if we type T-Y-P-E Blender dot P-A-L, you'll see those are the five values we generated with our program. These are the, the, the red, green, and blue components, if you will. Now this is now a file called Blender Pal that has those five values in it. So we exit. Now we'll open... QBA 14B, and I didn't even bother giving, wait, what? File, open, <clears throat> QBA 14B. There we go. I didn't even really bother saving this because it's it's not a complete program. It just shows how to load the colors in. So we run this here, and these are the, the five standard colors, one, two, three, four, and five. That's what you would get if you didn't change any palettes around. Now if we run, you can hit the button here, or space bar, 
those are our new colors we just saved. It loaded whatever color into color number one, loaded the next into color two, the next into three, next into four, it's five, etc. Now, how does this work? Well, if we look, we got screen 12. That just sets it to, <clears throat> to screen, uh, to graphics mode. And for Z equals 10 to 500 step, it just draws those, those five boxes. That's not really important. We sleep with, uh, there's another cool uh, function. Hold on a second. There's another cool command. Now let's take a look at sleep. Sleep is seconds. In other words, it will suspend your program for how many seconds? You put in five seconds, it just pauses for five seconds. You put in 17 for 17 seconds. But if you put in zero or nothing, then the program is suspended until a key is pressed. So it's, it's uh, equivalent to a pause command. So basically we, we just, this part here sets it to graphic modes, draws our five boxes in the standard one, two, three, four, five colors. Now we sleep until a, uh, a key is pressed, any key. Once you uh, press this key, it opens the Blender Pale file for input as number one. Z equals zero and do loop, it just draws, it's, it's the same, it draws those five or, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't even draw the, redraw the boxes. It doesn't have to redraw the boxes. It just changes the palette colors. So input one color. So what it's doing is it's getting input the first number from, gets the first number from Blender Pal, saves it in a variable got color. Now it takes palette Z, one, the first one, puts the value of color in there, loops until end of file one. Now it goes to the next one and <clears throat> inputs back to file one again. This time it's, the number two, it takes that second color, puts it into attribute number two, and then back around, back around until it reaches the end of the file. Then it ends. So it's simple as that. It just input from one. In other words, it reads, we open our Blender Pal for input. And it tells QBasic that we're gonna look into this file and get the information from it. Now here in this loop, we input one from that file, whatever our color number is. Then it goes to the palette, whatever palette, the, the first attribute, second, third, fourth, etc. And it puts the, the value that we generated, saved to the file, pumps it into that, that palette, and around around until the end of the file. So that's all this program does. If you had a game where you wanted 16 different colors, 30 different colors, 87 different shades of blue or green or whatever, then you would just save all those, those save all those color values in this blender pal, and however many numbers you've saved, you loop that many times, load it into the palette, and you're done. So now we'll go back to QBA 14. And if you know, okay, let's, let's shell again here. Oh, here we go. Bring this up, shell. DIR all dot palette and again we got blender pale and default pale type blend blender dot pal Boop. there we go and here's the, the numbers that we saved huh. so we'll exit here and i'll show you another cool point here let's we'll run this so we've got our program running we can come up with other whatever value it doesn't really matter in this case we don't want to save anything. So color, we don't click this, we don't save anything, we just quit. Why'd we do this? Well, now if we shell, now if we do a DIR all palette, if you notice, Blender is now gone. All I have is default palette. So what the program does is, well, you saw it's got the bars. It allows you to select whatever colors you want. Ooh, that's kind of groovy. Wee! Allows you to select whatever colors that you want and save them. One, one different color, two, three, four, however many you want to save. It then puts that information into a file called blender.pal and saves it to your disk. Now, when you want to write your game program, whatever, you can later open that file. That's all the, the information you need to get those custom colors, display them on screen for your game. However, if you're done with that, you don't want to keep that file on your hard drive, you just run the program, you save nothing, you don't save any numbers, and it, it deletes the file. So exit here, and I'll, I'll hit, I think I'll explain that a little better because I don't know if I did the first time. Uh, yes, uh, save palette, yes. 
here if you if you click on the save button it does it loops mouse three loop until uh, b equals zero again until you release the mouse mouse it does nothing then it takes the color number value that we just created pumps it into the file one it says print file one with that number it then updates color to color plus one and the next time this is called it gets the rgb and instead puts it into file one but now the second line second third line fourth line etc then locates and prints it on screen so that's what the palette does it just excuse me it just uh stuffs the data into the file now quit if you notice here yeah quit mouse two that turns off the mouse so the, the cursor is not visible we take the, the, the length of the file and save that in a variable called file length, close all files, and if file length happens to be less than one, in other words, if you didn't save anything, if it's zero, then kill blender.pal. So that gets rid of, rid of the blender.pal file if you didn't save anything. And then it closes, uh, well, it's already closed. I guess we don't need that second close file, but we clear screen system and the program. That's about it for the program. Uh, hopefully that I've just... Uh, it well enough if not just watch it again hopefully after seeing it a few times it'll kind of click what's happening we'll run this again just a quick review we've got our color bars we click on it with the mouse and we got anywhere from 0 to 63 63 different shades of red 63 shades of green 63 shades of blue and we can mix and match add whatever we want etc etc there's 23 36 17 it takes whatever those values are uses the formula to create our color value that color value is then if we choose to save a color into that file that color is then stuffed into that into the file maybe we want to save another one so we change the colors around click save color again and now saves color two etc etc when we're done we quit boom and that's that now we have that file which if we when we are writing a game or, or even a, a different program some sort of a file manager what have you but we can use that file open it later to get the custom colors that we generated with this program and again if we didn't if we didn't save any any colors then it just deletes the blender pal file because we don't need it we're not using it it's just a temporary thing anyway all right, well, that will do it for the code section of this video. Now, uh, up next, we got superiors, and we got to hang on to uh, this. <laughs> you like this one, this uh, young fellow by the name of Tinu. He runs a page over on YouTube called uh, Cajun Craft Tastrophe. Yeah, I still have trouble fitting that all out, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun. We'll go over, check him out, and then uh, I guess wrap up afterwards. So here we go. Here, Here's Tinu. Come on, Tinu. All right. Well, as mentioned, this is the the YouTube page for Cra Cajun Craft Catastrophe. Uh, <laughs> this fella is just obscenely talented. Just a, a brave, bright young fella, and he's got all kinds of great. He's got this great stop motion animation he does, and that's that's his character is Tinu, who you see right here. That's Tinu, and his dad. That's his dad. But anyway, uh, he does. Like you got uh, uh, being an undead astronaut. We've got the hamburger of doom, whatever that is. Hurricane suck. You can't argue with that. I love the samurai robot killer. That was fun. But uh, all the different oh, uh, sculpting, different characters and uh, uh, figurines, what have you. Uh, just okay. Well, he does mini sh uh, mini movies and shorts, things like that. Does, builds a crash cycle out of an old plastic uh, toy cycle. Just wow. Space rabbit sculpture. That was a fun one. I enjoyed that too. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, Clinton Beastwood. <laughs> That's clever. Uh, oh, here's the frog ramp. I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, where he's, it's a ramp. Uh, apparently, he had frogs that were stuck in his pool, couldn't get out. So he built a ramp for them to get out. <laughs> Who thinks of these crazy things, right? In any case, uh, yeah. It, there's just. Uh, in fact, his videos uh, you may be reminiscent of the Craftsman, and oddly enough, he and the Craftsman have done a blog. Was it uh, Craft Craftyverse, something like that? But the two of them get together, talk about some of the techniques they do and, and some of their projects they've done. But uh, yeah, if you love Craftsman, which I know you will, then you got to check out Cajun Craft Catastrophe. Good old Tinu over there doing his magic and a uh, lot of fun. Great. All kinds of crafts and things. You, you'll be well, brains. Who needs? Who doesn't need brains, right? Uh, but uh, you will be entertained. I'll put it that way, and you'll learn something. So check him out, Tinu. You're the best, man. Great work. All right, now back to the video. And uh, oh, we got some follow up on the space shuttle. Hang on a second.
here we go. All right. Well, as we promised earlier, we have a few more fun, interesting facts about uh, the space shuttle. Yeah, well, not so much the space shuttle itself, but uh, this gadget right here, the launch vehicle, and specifically these guys, the SRBs or solid rocket boosters. Uh, it's oddly enough, the uh, the uh, engineers at, at NASA, they refer to these, or jokingly refer to these, the Roman candles, because you light them and they go. But see, the, the difference, the, the basic thing, these are solid rockets, meaning their propellant is like a solid paste, not a liquid, as opposed to the, the space shuttle itself, the, the engines there are liquid fuel, that's where the tanks for, the, all of the fuel for this, the shuttle. Now, the liquid fuel engines can be throttled up and down as needed. But the solid rocket boosters, no such deal. You light them and they're gone. Now it's amazing. I, I actually saw a documentary years ago when the, when the shuttle was new about these things. These critters are so powerful that if they just lit, lit them full powered, they'd rip straight off the the, the vehicle. It just so much thrust that the, the rest of it couldn't keep up. They would lit, rip right loose. So instead, what they do, of course, is solid rocket. They're solid propellant, but they create it instead of a big. Uh, like rod of it they have segments almost think about like kind of like the uh, the old pez dispensers you get where you put one little thing in at a time from top to bottom well in this case they load them bottom to top almost like big hockey pucks full of, of fuel and now that the first ones here up top they're they're more pure and just basic propellant and then as they go down they they dilute each disc a little more i think is it phosphate fade up think they put in there but in any case the idea is that when they light them they start with maybe i don't know 50 percent thrust and they burn through that disc get a little more thrust a little more pure a little more thrust up until by the time they hit the, the pure uh yeah the pure propellant the rocket's already going is you know they can afford to lay on the the thrust so that's what they do and in fact these things have so much so much thrust as i said they would rip loose but that's the whole reason that the the shuttle itself when it launches it's got the uh, oop it's got its engines at full throttle Let's get this back on here. Let me just hold on a second. In any case, yeah, so as mentioned, the, the solid rocket booster, see, these guys got so much trust, they would rip right right free from the unit. And in fact, that's why we got the tank here to feed the the, thru, the main engines on the shuttle. You see, when it takes off, the shuttle has got, it's given its all just to keep up with the rest of the launch vehicle or else it would rip loose. It would just thud on the on the uh, the pad, but that's not a good thing, of course. So we got that the solid rockers, they're diluted, they're given just minimum, and then little old uh, the space shuttle that could here is given its all just to keep up with the rest of the, the gear. In fact, at one point they thought about getting rid of the tank altogether. And just mounting these solid rocket boosters straight to the the shuttle itself, but I mean they'd have to be bound so tight they'd be permanently built into the shuttle, and that's great for launch, but for for landing, well, they just pfft, dive bomb because <laughs> these things uh, they say that the the shuttle itself is like flying a brick, or they call it the flying brick because that's the aerodynamics, and with those boosters on there, it just wouldn't fly, no pun intended. So that's the way they they, they created it. They they got the. Uh, the tank there to fuel the shuttle while it's it's launching into space once this the SRBs and the tank are done it's still got full tanks of its own for whatever mission in space then here we come back down so wow a lot of engineering a lot of thought goes into this it's almost like those those folks over there in NASA got some pretty big pretty big brains on them right well, in any case, that's all I had for you as far as that. I thought that was pretty fascinating. And so now, uh, well, that I guess we need to just uh, shut things down here. This video's about over. Uh, so I guess we'll close it up, and that'll do. All right, we're done here. That's the end of the video, if you're still awake. Uh, but yeah, as, as before, just go ahead and download this code, mess with it, play with it, even take it, pull it apart, tinker it. That's how we learn. So yeah, have fun just checking it out. And, and that, um, what else have I got to say? Not too much, really. Check out Cajun Craft Tastrophe. Yeah, it's a mouthful, but you'll enjoy it. lots of fun stuff there. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I guess I'll see you when I see you. So, uh, until then, hasta la pizza, baby.